So do you get to go to galleries often without people running up and wanting to talk to you? Oh yeah, it can get, can get by quite well. They yeah. want to stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> They've seen I, my movies. They're afraid. Art is one of Steve Martin's passions, as we saw when we met up with him at New York's Whitney Museum, pausing to consider the impact of this George Bellows fight scene. We call it wall power. That's a great phrase, wall yeah, power, yeah. and that means what? Phrase, it just means how it looks, how it holds the wall, how it feels when you're 10 or 20 feet away from it. It really uh, takes hold of the room. So does Steve Martin. He's most famous for his stand-up comedy. Oh no, I'm getting happy feet, whoa! You'll be a dentist. You have a talent for causing things. He's acted in dozens of films. Did you say that Booth was soundproof? Yes. He's written screenplays too sometimes slipping in sly references to art, as in 1991's L.A. Story. He wrote a whole play about Picasso. Why do you think art is a good subject for the drama of a novel or a play? Well, there's a lot of uh, thought in, in art. Uh, people get to talk about important things. Uh, there's a lot of sex, you know, in art. There's a lot of naked women and men. And um, there's intrigue, there's fakery. It's, it's a real uh, microcosm of the, of the larger world. And it's all there in his new novel, An Object of Beauty, set in the high-flying New York art scene. Martin's main character, Lacey Yeager, starts as an apprentice at Sotheby's and ends up owning her own downtown gallery. She's kind of a bright and shiny person, but I, I'm not sure you meant us to really like her. Yes, yeah, she's um, one of those characters that is very alluring. When she walks into a room, the room stops. But sometimes those people, if they have a manipulative side, they can be dangerous. And um, she's not afraid to use charm. Uh, to get what she wants. The story is told through the eyes of a young narrator whose dry wit sounds a lot like Steve Martin's. His dream is to write clearly about art and he cites his heroes and so as the writer of the narrator's words I had to write clearly <laughs> about art. <laughs> so I really worked hard at that. Martin's personal art collection was on view in 2001 at the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas works by Picasso, Roy Lichtenstein, David Hockney, and more. Well, how did you end up starting to, you know, have the oh, nerve? Because it takes yeah, a little bit does, of guts to buy art. It does take a little art. bit of nerve. I, 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 you know, I've sort of prowled antique shops, and I first started buying little antique store paintings, and I hung a light over it in my apartment. And uh, I thought, wow, that looks great. Uh, I thought it was made a nice atmosphere. Uh, sometimes I like the frames more than the paintings. <laughs> <laughs> he draws on his own experience in his new book, when his main character keeps a Milton Avery painting overnight in her apartment for a client. And she thinks, well, as long as I'm here, I may as well hang it. And it's the first um, beautiful thing she's ever been with in, this, in her life, in, in a private situation and it immediately makes her look around <laughs> at everything else, and she realized she's got to grow up. Martin insisted that images of the paintings his characters discuss be interspersed with the text in the book. So I can say boring passages <laughs> and have, have the picture already be there, which is already interesting. What's the most rewarding part when you've written something and you're like, okay, this is really going. I, I, I think I got this nailed. There's finding the idea, there's finding the words for it, and then there's finding the exact words for it. <laughs> that's, that's a great thrill. In An Object of Beauty, Martin frequently mentions artists he has collected, like Edward Hopper. What's your picture like that you uh, It's called Captain Upton's House. It happens to be one of, I think, one of his great pictures. It's a 
lighthouse on a hillside. I've owned it for about 25 years. And walking around the Whitney's Edward Hopper exhibit with Martin and Museum Director Adam Weinberg gives meaning to the phrase, art appreciation. I think it's the great thing about Hopper is you think you know what it's about, but no matter how much you study it, right. you never really get it. Right. I mean, that's what I think makes art, really great art, great, is that you can never quite sum it up exactly. in, a, in a sentence. You think you can, but once you have done that, the painting is then dead. Right. It's done. That's right. So great paintings really live on because they're not quite explicable. Mm -hmm. Martin also acknowledges part of the allure of collecting is the thrill of the hunt. I talked to a collector friend of mine and he said, Steve, he said, I, he said, I, I followed this Jackson Pollock for years. I wanted this picture so bad for years and finally it came up and I got it and I got it and I took it home and I put it on the wall and I looked at it for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Has that ever happened to you, or have you been a little luckier? Uh, you know, it comes and goes. Martin's novella, Shop Girl, was made into a film with him as one of the stars. Now I'm your watch. He says he's not sure if the new book will become a film. If you were in the movie, what would you play? What role would I you play? I think the only role I could play would be the Barton Talley, the art dealer. You'd probably be pretty good at that. Well, I don't know if it's a big enough role for me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, would you rather win a Pulitzer or an Oscar? Um, well, since the odds of either are z almost zero, um, I, I would, uh, I'm trying to think what would hurt my friends more. <laughs> <laughs> I think a Pulitzer would hurt, <laughs> hurt people more. They'd be more yeah. jealous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, he recently won a Grammy for playing his banjo. And whatever Steve Martin is up to, it's always about pleasing the crowd. No matter how many times people say it, oh, I'm just writing for myself, oh, I'm just doing this for myself. Nobody's doing it for themselves. You're doing it to, for an audience. Uh, so whether I'm performing or writing a book or playing music, it's definitely to be put out there and to be received in some way, definitely. Mm -hmm.